lovely good morning to you my dear listener today as usual we have come your way the don bosco youth vibes it comes your way every saturday morning at exactly 10 hours and as i had mentioned earlier last week i made mention that we're going to be hosting salesian sisters as this is the month when we get to celebrate the spirituality of salesians in the month of january and last week i hosted salesian priests and it was quite an insightful and a profound program you can take time to go and check it out on youtube which is don bosco youth network and ensure to subscribe and in order for you to be part of it please leave a comment in the comment section to host you today my dear listeners and viewers on youtube my name is chivesa cecilia Mungulue, and of course in the studios i am excited and privileged to be hosting salesian sisters and we have three lovely beautiful amazing ladies you guys <laughs> good morning sisters good, good morning. morning did you hear that <laughs> All right, so today in the studios I've been joined by Sister Chanda, Sister Justina Mumanga, Sister Precious Mumanga. These are the three ladies I'll be chatting with today as they get to explain the spirituality of Salesians as well as being a Salesian sisters. What is it all about? You know, what do they do? When did they start? All those questions and more on the other side. Now we dive right into today's discussion where we talk about the spirituality of Salesians. So we, we would like now to pick it up from your sister Justina. When we hear Salesian sisters, what are Salesian sisters? Who exactly are we? Salesian sisters, also known as daughters of Mary, help of Christians. We are a religious congregation that was founded in the year 1872 in Italy, uh, Monese, by St. John Bosco and St. Maria Dominica Mattarello as our co founders so we Salesians work with young people, just like Don Bosco uh, was working um, with the young people, the boys, but ourselves we work with the girls, but of course we are also open to work with um, boys as well. So our work is um, education through evangelization. So we try to evangelize the young people in our uh, centers and um, missions that we are working from. Uh, and in evangelizing these young people, we also try to evangelize more, especially the underprivileged uh, young people. So we try to promote them and also ensure that their standard of living is uplifted, as well as help them discover who they are, so that at the end of the day, they also become good Christians and honest citizens. Thank you so much, sister. Very profound and it's brief, concise, but on the point, very objective. Now, you have mentioned something that is very important where you said you were founded in Italy. So your congregation is an international congregation, right? Yes, it's an international congregation. Interesting. Now, uh, looking at the fact that we are in Zambia and it's an international congregation, I would then like to find out, when did you come to Zambia and for how long have you been working in Zambia? Sister Precious. Well, uh, as Salesian sisters, uh, Part of um, Africa here in Zambia, we came in uh, 1984. That is in Africa, we are in Lesotho, we are in South Africa, and here in Zambia. Yeah. So, where is your provincial house? And our provincial house is in South Africa. Yes. Uh, we, we, we will then want to know wait, I'm very curious, how many are you in total? We are 15,000. and. Uh, and in as much as we are an international congregation, we, I say we are 15,000 because in some other parts of the world, the, uh, the vocations are not as uh, many as we can have them here in Africa. No, 15,000, Sister Chanda, is quite a good number and something that is very impressive and convincing for a young person out there to be part of the Salesian sisters. The drive that is very encouraging about the Salesians is the fact that your spirituality is about reaching out to the young people, especially the girls. What are some of the challenges that you've gone through in terms of reaching out to the young people? The biggest challenge of being young in today's society uh, is very much linked to what today's society is offering. I'm looking at this society in which you are growing up today and it is so complex. It is offering you much more than I was offered when I was growing and that already becomes a challenge. And just to highlight a little bit on uh, a few challenges which I'm seeing specifically, let me highlight the challenge of social media. We are living in a globalized world you people are able to know what uh, the West is offering, other parts of Africa are offering, and that can bring a lot of confusions. 
And uh, that has a challenge already as Salesian sisters, we try, as we try to work with young people, that in, as a response to this challenge, we try to educate the young people in regard to the proper use of the social media. And we also try to educate the young people in the proper understanding of uh, being in a globalized world, that it is good to know what the other parts of the world are offering, but what exactly is your context uh, offering and uh, how do you pay attention to your identity as a Zambian, for example, and African young person who is called to exist in this globalized world? The other challenge I can highlight also in this uh, society, which is so complex again, is the same challenge of evangelization. The young people understand that uh, it is important to believe in God and they love the church as well, but to remain there uh, we need to find ways and means of uh, evangelizing them in a, uh, as young people who are growing in today's society. We can't uh, be there to be talking to you, to be evangelizing you as one would have done some 10 years ago because your society is offering you much more. So there comes a challenge of finding creative ways of evangelizing you, uh, you young people of today. And to that effect, the aspect of catechesis making sure that you understand the faith, you understand what who God is in your lives so that you are able to make better choices is something which is very, very cardinal. And uh, the other uh, challenge I would highlight also uh, is that um, uh, the popular word of peer pressure also becomes so cardinal, whereby being young, you are still looking for your identity. And uh, many young people get to uh, be confused and get lost, not because they want, but simply because they haven't yet understood who they are and they are easily being disturbed by the others who at times come in as, a, as if they are offering them something very, very positive. So there comes in the importance of uh, helping the young people to grow in understanding who they are, understanding where they are coming from, understanding where they are going and indeed to understand the meaning of their lives. Now, Sister Chanda, you have mentioned quite a number of challenges, and most of them you've offered solutions to them. I'll just drive you back a little bit when it comes to social media and the exposure that uh, young people have had and how you want to evangelize or how you want to get to reach through them. When you are on social media, there are auto suggestions that are already there and you tend to feel and think that you have enough information. You might not even want another person to come and chip in. Uh, for lack of a better term to use, we youths, if you won't think that the generations that have come before us are outdated and that we are the ones who know what is going on and what is currently on the market, what is trending, how then are you able to convince or how can you convince a young girl, a young boy out there to say, hey, this is what life is all about and off this social media there is actually this real life because sometimes we feel loved on social media when we get those likes we feel like that's when we are cared for when we get those 1k 2k comments we feel well, that is it this is it so how then are you going to chip in and tell me to say snap out of this life and come into this reality to begin with chivesa i wouldn't demonize social media de per se it is something mm -hmm. which is very very positive and uh, as i mentioned earlier that I wouldn't like to remain there and say the society I grew up into is a better one. No, mm -hmm. I appreciate what social media is offering, meaning you are still at school, you are still studying, and you can see how much the social media is able to offer you, the internet, uh, generally speaking. It is offering you a lot of in information. So what is important is that critical aspect of how to delve into social media and still remain yourself. That is why I put an emphasis of, on uh, educating the young people on their identity Entity. Because failure to understand who you are, failure to understand that uh, beyond social media there is a life there which is much more meaningful and which is real, that is where one gets to be confused. And I've always believed that um, it is not your fault when I look at you young people of today. Because leave alone you, even us adults, most of us, these aspects of social media, even the same gadgets we are using, have landed into our hands without any uh, jugative preparation. And we are simply trying to uh, use them through trial and error. So try to imagine a young person who is still growing. I mean, I don't blame you. So that is where the challenge of us as Salesian sisters who are educators and who are constantly found with young people is, comes in, whereby we need to educate you, we need to help you to use the social media critically and to believe that it is something which is positive, which you can uh, use to interact with your fellow young people with. It is a, 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 a reality for you, it is a, a world for you. And uh, at this point, I can't even dream to say I can take you out of that world. You have been born into 
into that world. So my challenge still remains, how do I educate you? How do I accompany you in that area, which is a real uh, area for you, as you exist as young people today? Yeah. Now, um, I think I'm going to do a little bit on more of the young people looking at the fact that you work with young people. Uh, Sister Justina, uh, drug abuse is something that is rampant currently on the market. Uh, you know, substance abuse, alcohol, is it beer drinking, uh, mentioned but a few. How are you as Alasian sisters trying to help or supplement government's efforts in curbing these vices that are going on with young people through evangelization? In our evangelization, we try to use the methodology that we call the preventive system. So this is uh, where we use um, religion, uh, reason, and loving kindness. So in dealing with these young people, we also try to help them know that there is something good in them, despite them uh, uh, maybe being uh, to, um, abusing uh, drugs or whatever it is, they have to discover that there is something good in them, and they have to, to feel loved. We cannot um, uh, judge them, but in helping them, they have to know first of all that there is something in them, and that is why we, we dwell. That good that is in them is where we, we, we take from. And from there now we try to, to help them come into out of what is um, happening. So they have to feel that they are loved by you. Despite uh, them being what they are, they, 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 we have to see Christ in them. And they too uh, should be able to see Christ in, 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 in us. Very interesting. Sister uh, uh, Precious, do you have anything to add on, on that point? Apart from that, we we are also called to seek souls. I think that is the main point in us working with the young people. We are interested in that which is good in the person of the young people. As Salesian sisters, we also run something which is somehow extraordinary as Salesians, which we call an oratory. This is a free space where young people can come after school and there we offer them activities like uh, sports, like uh, swimming, whichever activities which the young people are interested in. Why are we doing this? Don Bosco started this uh, uh, kind of an extracurriculum kind of an experience because we believe that most of the young people delve into uh, drug abuse for lack of uh, activities which can occupy them. So in, in, in all our Salesian centers, we, you will find what we call the oratory, which is open to everybody. Uh, it, is, uh, it doesn't only bring on board the Catholic uh, young people, for example, and it is for all age groups. So that is one way I can mention that uh, we are trying to curb this uh, uh, drug abuse. I already mentioned the skill centers. This is another possibility also whereby uh, in order to come in to supplement the government efforts, we re realize that uh, it's not everybody who is uh, gifted academically. So we are trying to come in with skill centers. For example, with uh, the Salesian fathers who were here uh, uh, the other day, they spoke, they have an agricultural school in Lufugu. As Salesian sisters also here in Lusaka, we have two skill centers. And at a place where Sister Justina is working, we have a home for girls at risk. You may be surprised that uh, some of these young people, they delve, they move into drug abuse as early as uh, even eight. So we are trying to come in by creating even home for girls. As Salesian sisters, we have one at Seat of Hope, and we have another one in Mazabuka, Seat of Joy. These are some of the ways we are trying to come in. Sister, I know that you have projects in Lusaka, Kasama, Mansa, Mazabuka, and here in Zambia, Lesotho, and South Africa. What is one expected to find at these places? In these places, uh, Sister Justina highlighted in this, we are running schools and we are running skill centers, as I have mentioned. But what is cardinal to us is that uh, we have a specific methodology, which is called the preventive system. And this methodology rests on three pillars, which, which are uh, religion, reason, and loving kindness. And these pillars are so cardinal to us because we believe that uh, if, if we are dealing with young people, in order to understand them, them. As an adult dealing with them, I need to understand who they are. So reasoning comes in so that even as I deal with them, I don't simply blame them for what they are doing. I'm there uh, as a person who is able to understand, knowing the challenges they are, they, they are facing, knowing the challenge also to be able to grow because growing is not something easy. You can say that 10 times more than me, Mubanga. And uh, speaking about uh, religion also, in our institutions, in our schools, in our home for girls, uh, religion, the aspect of evangelization is cardinal. 
And we do this with loving kindness. We simply try to make the, under, the young people understand that we love them. In as much as we are not their, their biological parents, but the aspect of loving them, it was highlighted by the Salesian Fathers uh, last week in your program, that we are getting this from St. Francis de Sales, whom Don Bosco uh, named us after, who understood very well that uh, in order to uh, help and educate the, 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 the human being, this human being has to understand that I'm loved. So we try to operate under that methodology, which is called the preventive system. And when we speak about uh, uh, preventing, it can come across as something which is very, very negative. It isn't in the actual sense. Actual sense, rather, we are uh, we use preventive measures whereby we try to arrive before the young people get lost. We try to be there for them before they uh, begin to feel that nobody loves us. So this preventive aspect is really something which is positive. And I, I mentioned earlier that uh, we oper it operates, it works out under these three pillars, which are reason, religion, and loving kindness. So what is specific about us is actually that methodology, which you wouldn't find in other schools. There are many Catholic schools around, but our uh, specific element is the methodology, which is the preventive system. Right. Now, all these young people who are facing different challenges, who have their exposure to social media, who are under substance abuse, who are facing peer pressure, are coming from families. So then we want to now pick it up from the roots, for us to be able to clear off the vices, for us to be able to find the solutions to these problems that these young people are going through. It is all about family. I then want to find out from you, Sister Precious, what contributions do Salesian sisters make to the family that is under threat currently or where the young people is, are coming from? I would say, as Salesian sisters, uh, looking at what Sister Chanda said, we are very much interested and believe in the families because these young people that come to us, they are coming from the families. And it is there in the families that the first education is given. And so when we look at the realities of these days or in our time, families are so much broken to say so. You find that at home there are no parents, children are just by themselves. Sometimes they are staying with their stepmothers, stepfathers. You, it is difficult to find really a complete family this time. And so we are also not just limited to see the young people. We go further to see where they are coming from. And that means we take a visit to see the, the parents or the families of these young people. Then from there we pick it up to help the young people. And we find that uh, our help that we render to the young people becomes more eff uh, effective if these parents or families are also involved. Because the, the young people can be given good values then yes, when they come to us in our oratories, our sisters said, in our skill center, wherever we meet them. But what do they find when they go back to their family? Something different. So that also becomes an hindrance to help, not until we also reach to the families. Very interesting there. Now, I, I have a question that I received on my Facebook account uh, from a very young person. So maybe I would like to get your comment on it. Maybe I would like you to assist this particular person. I'm sure the person is tuned in. So this person is coming from a broken home where a mother and a father are no longer together after fights and everything. And the father almost abused this girl child. How then can they find comfort in such a home or how then can you help such kind of a person to be able to go back to the roots of their parents? Because that is where the problem is coming from. Sister Justina. So at the moment, I would say we would um, maybe try to assess more, maybe visit that home, find out what is really happening. We would also maybe love to hear from the other side, to listen from the child, but also from the parents. What is the issue at hand? Maybe what is really going on? So that we may come in to help this child. And uh, the fact that uh, uh, that young person has come out in, uh, in the open to share about their problem, it is already something which is very, very positive. So as a help uh, there, uh, today's young people need to understand this reality. I mean, uh, that uh, there are things which are happening in today's families which you wouldn't even believe. Um, right now we understand that uh, besides the natural family as we know it, we wouldn't like to be blind that uh, young people uh, 
uh, a preview to situations whereby uh, uh, two men even are able to come together and they call that uh, a family or two women are able to come together and they call that a family. Our young people are preview to that because they are on social media, as I earlier mentioned. So our task as Salesian Sisters there again is to come in with uh, education so that we cushion this kind of uh, a culture which is presenting before the young people things which are, 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 are not real according to our Christian beliefs. So um, at the center of all these problems, we have these uh, young people who need to be educated. Sister Justina mentioned that we have homes where they can be welcomed. But I want still to believe that uh, young people need to understand these dangers so that they are able to come out and seek the help which they necessarily need. Because failure to understand that uh, 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 there are these problems, they can easily be victims of what you are mentioning. So the first step is to educate them to understand what a proper family is supposed to be and what a confusion, uh, what, uh, what are the confusions which are the society is bringing on board uh, uh, are, so that they are able to differentiate. Like that, they'll be able to come out in the open and cry to people who can assist them out there. How do you do your evangelization? Do you go out on the street and reach out to young people? Do you wait for them to follow you to your offices? Or you only evangelize to those people that are within your vicinity, within your schools, within the centers that you're running? How do you go about your evangelization? We evangelize as we educate, and we educate as we evangelize. So whatever we do, evangelization is at the center. We run also preschools. And at the center of uh, what we are doing with those preschool children, we try to make them understand that uh, their life comes from Christ. We try to put uh, God at the center of their lives, right from the word go, at uh, a very, very tender age. Whether we go into primary school, secondary school, skill centers, what is cardinal for us is to help whoever comes in contact with us that uh, without God you wouldn't exist. We are happy when our young people excel and they get their six points and all that. We are happy when they excel even in skills, but it doesn't end there. Because we know that being human is beyond simply uh, achieving academically speaking. So uh, besides simply being in our schools, like today you have invited us here at the studio, this is one way of evangelization. We don't only remain within our centers, as I share, Mubanga, you and I met at the University of Zambia. I've been uh, working for some time uh, for the uh, Episcopal Conference. Uh, in youth ministry. That is one way of getting in touch with the, with the young people. We don't simply remain within our fences. We go wherever the young people are found. And I make mention again here, even to the parishes here in Lusaka, even in other centers who are dealing with the youth. If at all you are interested in somebody coming to help you, even run a retreat for the young people. Our Salesian brothers were here last week. I mean, we are here today. Feel free to step in, feel free to get in touch with us and we are simply happy to assist. I mean, we don't only work with young people within our centers. We are ready to go anywhere, wherever we are needed. Thank you so much. There you have it, my dear listener. I was chatting with Salesian Sisters today. On the panel was Sister Chanda. We also had Sister Justina Mumanga. We had Sister Precious Mubanga. These are the ladies that I was chatting with on today's Don Bosco Youth Vibes show. I hope that you, my viewer on YouTube and my listener on Radio Maria, have learned one or two things and that you have learned about the spirituality of the Salesian Sisters as well as that of the Salesian Priests. Please feel free to subscribe to share our content on YouTube and to stay tuned right here to our YouTube channel feel free to like our Facebook page and you are free to ask any questions that you are uh, you know are, are, are very curious about or if you're going through a certain situation that you feel only a lady can hear of if you feel like you are not in a safe environment if you feel like your home is not safe any longer please do feel free to reach out to the Salesian sisters and they will quickly come to your aid as they are always available for you our young people my name is Princess Chivesa Cecilia Mungulube and until next week, same time, same place, we'll be hosting the uh, cooperators for the Salesians. We continue to celebrate the spirituality of St. Don Bosco. We love you and thank you for watching. Good morning.